Whenever I think of Bang & Olufsen, I always think of excellent sound quality and forward-thinking design. A design that never shies away from new technology, trends, or different approaches to age-old problems, even if those problems aren't always immediately evident to the end user. Which brings us to one of their newest portable loudspeakers, the Bio Sound Level. At first glance, you may write this book-sized loudspeaker off as just another wireless Bluetooth-enabled smart speaker in an endless sea of wireless Bluetooth-enabled smart speakers. And I'm only saying that because that's what I did. But the level is so much more than that. So settle in, hit that like button, and subscribe because we're going to find out just how revolutionary it really is. <laughs> Now, I will admit, when I first took delivery of the Level, I didn't think that it was all that revolutionary. I mean, after all, one of its core design promises is simply portability. And it's that portability factor that I think is going to turn off some enthusiasts and audiophiles, at least at first, because historically, two things that don't go together, portable speakers and good sound. But Stick with me for a second, because rather than treat the level like just about any product that we review on this channel, we decided to mix it up a little bit. And we took it with us to California, where we relied on it exclusively as our speaker system for about two weeks. And in those two weeks, me and the level, we started to click. The level is surprisingly portable despite its size. It fit easily into our carry-on luggage, and even after a long day of traveling, it held its charge thanks to its 16-hour battery with no problems. You can expect four hours of spirited listening, which we can definitely attest to. Thankfully, the level's rechargeable battery is removable, and it can be replaced, so you don't have to worry about longevity down the road. The level is available in two finishes, Bang & Olufsen's iconic dark gray and aluminum, as well as an even more stylish gold and light oak. Now, the price of the level does vary depending on the finish, the gray and aluminum color being the less expensive of the two, though after having lived with both, I would totally pop for the more expensive gold and oak finish as it is just stunning. Now, control over the Bio Sound level is handled one of two ways. You can either use the touch-sensitive controls on the unit itself that illuminate when you approach it, or you can use the Bang & Olufsen app. Now, you guys know that I, I like the Bang & Olufsen app, and I, or at least I love critiquing the Bang & Olufsen app. But what was weird to me is I actually found myself interacting with the level and using the touch-sensitive controls as much as I was using the app. Initially, I pushed back against this notion that people would want to use the level's physical controls, let alone pick it up and move it about. Boy, was I wrong. There's something inviting about the level that once you get used to this idea of just grabbing it and moving it about your home, you may find yourself doing it all the time. In a weird way, the level reminded me of being a kid when I used to haul my boombox from my room to the garage or backyard because I could. So for many of the same reasons surrounding why I absolutely hate wired headphones, the level lets me off my hi-fi leash and it allows me to enjoy the music anywhere I want. And here's where the level's next trick comes into sharper focus. When you pick up the level, the music will continue to play. However, when you set it back down again, it pauses, but it only pauses for a moment while the speaker adjusts itself, giving you the best sound possible automatically. The sheer fact that this level of room optimization exists in a portable device, one with appreciable and immediate positive effects is just awesome. To make fine adjustments to the level, that's all done inside the app. And the BNO app is, well, the BNO app. I still love it. I think it's incredibly intuitive, not to mention thoughtfully put together with graphics and imagery befitting a premium product such as the level. That said, in recent weeks or after some updates, I have found that connectivity issues have started to rear their head, whereby the app doesn't always see my BNO levels right away. Usually a refresh or relaunch of the app fixes this. However, this just wasn't something I experienced in my BioSound stage review or even at the beginning of my time with the levels. Now, to take advantage of the Level's smart functionality, mainly its Google Assistant integration, you're going to need to use the Google Home app. Through the Google Home app, you'll be able to assign the Level to rooms or groups, as well as mate two together for proper stereo pairing. Now, about that stereo pairing, in my experience, while it is technically possible, it is clunky at best and doesn't always work. Now, I've been told by BNO that they are working on an update to their app that would allow for proper right and left stereo pairing of two levels should you want to use them as part of a more traditional hi-fi setup. But the level's sheer flexibility 
actually had me asking about other potential possibilities, such as using the level as a portable soundbar for a TV, or maybe as a center speaker between two other B&O products, to which B&O intimated that all of the options I mentioned are on the table and would likely only require updates to software, not hardware, in order to pull off. So the prospects of this platform are more than intriguing. So enough about all of that. How does the level sound? Well, I will admit when I first unboxed it, set it up and started streaming music through it, I was pretty underwhelmed. Don't get me wrong, it sounded good, great even, but I had this reaction because I treated the level like any other wireless loudspeaker. I just set it in a place that I thought that I would use it and then promptly forgot all about it. It was only after I forced myself to carry it from one room to the next did my attitude and habits towards the level begin to change. And when we traveled with it, I absolutely fell in love. One of the things I miss most when traveling is our home stereo system. Yes, I can obviously live without a system while on vacation, but watching the occasional show or listening to music by the pool through a speaker as refined as the level was a real treat. It was like having a little piece of home that fit easily into my suitcase. This isn't the first small all-in-one smart speaker that has surprised me with respect to its sound quality and capability. The Muso 2 from Name is another great example of how tech has allowed for a stereo system to exist in a small form factor, but the level is on, well, another level. This speaker sounds incredible, and it has a consistency of sound quality no matter where you or it goes. No speaker is immune to room interactions and placement deficiencies, but the level gets so freakishly close to not caring about where it is. This in turn means that you don't have to stress over a lot of the nonsense that plagues traditional hi-fi setups because the level just gives it to you automatically. Now, all of that said, this is not a neutral speaker. It has Bang & Olufsen's trademark sound, for better or for worse, depending on which camp you fall into. It doesn't image the way a traditional two-channel setup can, and it is aimed squarely at digital or streaming music playback. But if you like the b and sound, don't care too much about stereo imaging because you either don't have a space for a dedicated setup or are just too on the go to appreciate one, and streaming music is your jam, the level really does do it all. Sound-wise, the level is clean, crisp, and punchy from the factory, and that sound is retained in all configuration and room environments through the auto EQ. There's definitely a boost in the bass, making the small level seem and feel larger. The two-inch sub driver inside the level helps give it a bass response down to 39 hertz. Bass is quick and taut with very little bloat or excessive boominess, two things that often plague a lot of small smart speakers trying to give you more of that full range performance than maybe they're capable of. The mid-range is decidedly B&O through and through. There is an incredible amount of detail and articulation, not to mention intelligibility. However, due to the mildly tipped up treble response, the mids sound a little lean or cool, which accentuates that perception of detail throughout. Still, the mid-range pairs great with all genres of music and sounds effortlessly clear at virtually any volume. Now, high frequencies are extended, but not the most airy with respect to decay, so the level hits the high notes. Just don't expect those notes to hang in space quite the same way they might through a traditional pair of speakers. That said, the tweeters never glare or become fatiguing, even at high volumes. B&O is definitely using a little filtration or limiters to keep the highs in check as you ratchet up the volume, but I don't really mind because the highs along with the rest of the speaker's sound never becomes unruly, thus spoiling your enjoyment. Soundstage, like I said earlier, is not really a factor here. Sure, you can pair two levels together for true stereo imaging, in which case you will get a soundstage that has decent width and depth, but not great. The process of turning two levels into a left and right pair isn't really that intuitive, and it's just frankly kind of a pain. But we know B&O is addressing this in a future update, so maybe we'll have to re-evaluate it. Just remember to unpair your levels if you want to grab one or both and move them about your house. Otherwise, you're going to be treated to a rather different sound experience, one that seems anemic and vague because after all, you're only gonna be getting half of the signal. In terms of dynamics though, holy smokes, the level is good. This thin little speaker can bring it. Like I said, b and is using some DSP to keep everything in check and to make the level sound bigger, fuller, and more impactful than its footprint would have you believe, but I don't care because whatever they're doing, it's working. 
So within the confines of what it is, the Bang & Olufsen level in terms of sound is another great sounding speaker from a brand known for making some pretty damn good sounding speakers. Because it's powered, has DSP and room compensation, the level is able to do things few speakers its size can manage. And in some ways, it even does a few things sonically even larger speakers can't replicate. That said, it's not perfect. My biggest gripe about the level is its reliance on two apps, the B&O app as well as the Google Home one. Both are great apps, but I hate having to use both depending on what I want to do with the level. That, and if you don't want to set up the level with Google Assistant, it's going to continue to occasionally prompt you to do so as in verbally, and I hate that. Turning off the microphone doesn't seem to shut it up either. B&O does offer the level without Google Assistant, though if you go to their website and spec one out, warning, it always appears to be out of stock. I like Google Assistant, I use it every day, but not every Google-enabled device in my home is active, and I quite like that, but it would seem that the level does not. Another thing that bothers me is the fact that Bang & Olufsen leans pretty heavily into the concept of mounting the level on your wall. You're going to find pictures and video of wall-mounted levels on their website, and yet they don't include the wall mount in the box. You got to buy it, as in separately. At this price point, I think they should give me everything that I need, especially since flexibility is one of the key selling points of this particular speaker. Now, this next one is both a bonus and a drawback. The level can be hardwired to any analog device, even a turntable with a built-in phono preamp, so long as you have the appropriate cables. It can also be wired to your home's network via Ethernet. The ports to do this, however, are somewhat a secret. You're actually going to find them hidden behind the charging port on the back of the level. I like that these options exist, though if you choose to use them, you may lose some of the level's flexibility, as you're going to end up with cables just sort of jutting out from the back of the speaker itself, thus making wall and flat configurations likely impossible. In terms of comparisons, there are more than a few. Like I said in the beginning of this video, portable Bluetooth or wireless speakers are a dime a dozen but I have yet to encounter one that sounds as good or is as well-rounded as the level. Notable alternatives, albeit ones that may be a little less portable, include the Klipsch The 3, Bowers & Wilkins Wedge, which we now have in-house for review, so stay tuned for that. The name Muso 2, which we've already reviewed and that you know we love, all the way down to the tiny Bose SoundLink Micro. You can watch our review of both the Muso 2 and the Micro for my detailed thoughts on those. But as it stands, I prefer the level to all of them, regardless of their makeup or price. I will admit, I went into this review unsure of what to make of the level. Even the speaker's own marketing materials depicting fashionable people moving the speaker from room to room seemed kind of gimmicky to me. I mean, who does that? But turns out I do. It was only after I lived with the level did my attitudes towards portability and the speaker really begin to change. And it has changed so much that I now look at other speakers and go, yeah, but can I enjoy those everywhere? Do they sound as good as the level does anywhere? And that's how fast a change in mindset can happen. So is the level going to replace my or your living room setup? No, or maybe not. But has it changed the way I look at or listen to and think about the future of audio? Absolutely. This is a potentially game-changing product, one whose importance is likely going to be lost on the enthusiast base, but that is going to be embraced by a new listener and a new generation to come, resulting in a decidedly different hi-fi future, one that isn't bound by the confines of a room or your gear. And I have to tell you, that's pretty damn exciting. So that's it. That is now my review of the Bio Sound level. Now it's time to find out what Christy thought of it. I really like it. Yeah? Yeah, I want to keep it. You're going to keep it? Uh, well, I'm not going to give it back. <laughs> Dear Bang & Olufsen, newsflash. Yeah. Not getting this one back. I'll send them back the gray one. Okay. But I want to keep, I really want to keep the wood. Okay. Yeah, it's awesome. Um, yeah, I I really enjoyed it. I, I'm, I will admit, like very much like you, when we first got it, got it out of the box, especially the gray one, which I'm like, mm, mm -hmm. why did they send us this? Mm -hmm. They do know we are... <laughs> More of a design conscious channel. We are channel. heavily design focused over here. <laughs> you sent the most boring one you've got. Why? Anyway, <laughs> um, I, I didn't... I, I was like, yeah, it, it was, it's cool, I guess. 
Mm -hmm. but I didn't like you. I didn't really see, I didn't really see the point. Yeah. It's not, there's not things that are captivating about it right out of the box, the gray and the silver one. Yeah. And I think it took moving it around, like sort of coming back to it after it sat Mm -hmm. and just, you know, griped at us periodically. Hey, why haven't you set me set my my Google, Google up, up yet? Because you know, we would we have other Google speakers and some you know we're always wanting to know how hot it is yeah. before we go you know melt away outside here in Texas. And every time we would ask, hey, you know, mm-hmm. you know what I want to say to find out what the temperature is, the level was like, don't forget about me. <laughs> don't forget to set me up. And I'm like, shut up. <laughs> We didn't ask you, but anyway, (laughs) that part works if you'll set it up. Um, But one of the things you didn't mention in the review was, um, or or sorry, you mentioned it, Mm -hmm. and that is connectivity issues. Now, I didn't personally have any connectivity issues, but I also used the level in a way that I don't think you did, and that was as a desktop computer solution speaker yeah no you you kind of confiscated the the wooden gold one after we got back from the trip and you were like this is mine now (laughs) yeah and you that's where it went (laughs) it's on your desk yeah it's on my desk (laughs) okay i've been using it i i uh, got rid of the the name muso 2 Mm -hmm. which had been your desktop my desktop solution and i have to say it's it works flawlessly and I will tell you that the Muso and prior to that, the Klipsch, the three, which mm-hmm. I think those are both really good speakers. They are. And they're fun and interesting in their own right. But as far as connecting to my computer, they were garbage. Mm-hmm. Um, always problems. Okay. Every time I would sit down, no matter um, which, which of those two speakers I was mm-hmm. using. And this was both with the brand new Mac mini m1 mm-hmm. computer and my previous um intel imac I, I'm, imac yeah every single time i had to tell it to play through the speaker through the muso even after you paired it even after i paired it every oh, time wow. and and that was I, I mean i could watch let's say i was watching a youtube video and then mm-hmm. i want to stream title on yeah. my computer mm-hmm even though I had just been watching a YouTube video, I would have to still go tell it to connect to the speaker through title. And it was so frustrating. I was yeah. like, why is this happening? This just doesn't seem like... Because it was the default. You had set your iMac to treat the Muso or the Eclipse yeah, as the as default the primary, speaker. Yeah. And it's still... Oh, Every wow. single time. And wow. like I said, at first, like I thought it was my iMac is the problem because it was an older computer. Mm-hmm. But then when we got the new, the new Mac Mini and... I think you've said that there's yeah, they, it's like they, a well-known thing that there's a lot of connection issues with they, them. The M1s have had some Bluetooth connection issues, so I would have written it off as maybe that. But that being said, I haven't had connection issues with my Sony headphones, so it's kind of like... Yeah, I don't, have, a, I don't yeah. have problems with my pair of Sony either. So anyway, point being, I'm so thrilled mm-hmm. that when I installed the um, the level on my desk... That it just works. Yeah. And isn't that what you want? And so I'm super happy about that. And it sounds really good. Yeah. So I think those are all really positive things. And, yeah. Those and are... our, our, my office is in our bedroom. We have really tall ceilings. Mm-hmm. And the sound is really, really, really good. So I, I think that it can work as a... A desktop situation and you're not wired to the Mac it's all it's all Bluetooth connection or airplay no I mean it's plugged into the wall for power, for power but it's so I'm not having to worry about battery life but yeah. what I'm saying is, is if like if you wanted to just grab it yeah I could you can just grab it and go I could. Not, wow yeah that's that actually is a use that I didn't I didn't test I just kept carrying it like when I would tear down the system in here obviously we don't have music so I just grab a level and set it on like the coffee table and play music while I was working Mm -hmm. Um, but no I I never I brought it into my office to organize cables but I never put it to my computer so you did something I didn't do (laughs) you're welcome folks yeah thanks you're welcome (laughs) Um, yeah so I mean so that was that was that's been that's been a lot of fun that's been a big selling point for you huge selling point for me like second big selling point 
it's gorgeous. Mm-hmm. I mean, come on. It's beautiful. Yeah. I mean, I'm not really talking about the gray one. You're fine. <laughs> You're fine over there, gray guy. But it's where it's at is the wood. The wood piece. Yeah. It's, the it's wood so the high end looking. Like, yeah. come on. It's so stylish. Yeah. And, and I know that recently um, somebody commented that we focus too much on style on this channel. And I'm just like, but do we really, though? I, I, I personally, I don't think so. I'm, I think the better question is maybe do other channels not focus on style enough? I would say maybe they don't. I mean, what's um, more interesting to look at? A beautiful piece of art or, you know, the back of the canvas where it was made? I, I, don't, <laughs> I don't know. Like, I, I just think that I kind of think that audiophiles in a in a way they've just kind of grown accustomed to accepting whatever boring box is given to them yeah you know yeah, I, mean, I could see that i i really think that that's kind of it i mean i i just don't believe that 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 a lack of innovation when it comes to style plays anywhere else so why should we as audiophiles or music enthusiasts or whatever you want to whatever name you, you want to give, give yourself yeah why why are you just accepting this crappy black box that's yeah got some cheap black glossy paint on it like why yeah you can have so much more in life yeah it may cost you a little bit more but it, it, can, it, it may it, it may, may it may not it may and it may not <laughs> i mean there's been quite a few speakers lately that are rel- that are very attractive at price points that i think are obtainable i mean Look, this is this is an expensive speaker. The 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 level is expensive if you look at it based on its description on paper. You know, portable Wi-Fi Bluetooth speaker for fifteen hundred bucks. I mean that that that's gonna make you go, oh ah. Yeah, it <laughs> you is know? it is a it is definitely something that makes you think, wow, do it is it's very that's 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 a lot of that's a lot of money. Yeah. For especially when you look at it, it's like, well, yes, it's really beautiful, but it's so small. What does it really do? Do I really need this? Mm-hmm. Um, and I know I I can already hear the 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 tapping on the keyboards <laughs> of well, yeah, dude, but I mean, I've got these like amazing uh, headphones, and they go with me wherever I go. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like I can totally hear you guys. I can totally hear you. But and and I'm not saying you're not wrong. No, headphones are headphones, portable. Headphones are are portable yeah. and you know, whatever. But I don't know if you're like me, but I can't wear headphones long for a long time a long term a long time before they become uncomfortable. Yeah. They start to hurt my ears. So I've never been a huge headphone person. Yeah. Um, and, and also besides that, you know, I just, I think headphones only allow you, you you know, you're the only person that gets to enjoy the music. So something like the level gives the, you know, experience, you can share the experience with multiple people yeah. and, and it can go everywhere. You're yeah. not like tethered. I, I just, I think that it's, I think it's going to be hard for the hardcore old school you know, enthusiasts, ho- audiophiles to, to consider something like this. But, yeah. you know, maybe it's not for you. And yeah. and I think that that's, it's kind of sad, but it's okay at the same time. I mean, I, I think what you said at the, end, at the end of your review about how, um, you know, this is how you can see a new listener, mm-hmm. a new a person that hasn't been, indoctrinated into what you should do yeah as an audiophile what you need to buy mm-hmm. i think that that's what this kind of product or who this this product is going to be really for you know there's this has to grow the hobby has to grow somehow mm-hmm. and i think this a product like the level is one of the ways that that happens yeah i will I will completely, I will completely agree with you. Um, I don't think that this is meant to appeal to audiophiles in any way. It really isn't. Um, one of the things that when I was writing the review, when I was writing the script, 
and I was really kind of reflecting on our time uh, back in L.A. And we had had a conversation about all my AV exploits in L.A. and going in dealers and, you know, trying to find the right the products with this and that and figuring it out from the, you know, the ground up. And I, re- I, I started to think about, like, how different my journey would have been if the, a product like the Level had been my first exposure to hi-fi mm-hmm. and how it has taken sea changes within myself to look at products like the Level at 40 years old and go, you know what, this is valid. This is actually better than valid. This is good. It's taken a lot of work to get to that point, whereas someone who may be in their early 20s experiencing the level for the first time, I'm not going to say that they're going to then think that the level is all that hi-fi has to give, but at the same time, they may never be burdened with the, the, the existential dread, if you will, of like, System, system chasing. chasing and pairing and do I have the right thing? And you oh, know, I totally agree with you. Yeah, because like we were sitting in the room in this in our living room just the other night with a pair of eight thousand dollars speakers that were, you know, demoing for review. And I'm like, and 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 we had we had also just been listening to the level mm-hmm. in the same room. Yeah, same night within minutes of each other. Yeah, and I was like. All right, we should listen to these $8,000 speakers, right? You know, we should turn them on. All right, so we're listening to them, and I'm like, do we, is this really necessary? All I mean, of this. All of this. Yeah, yeah. Meaning all of the, these $8,000 speakers and the amplifier and the, you know, blah, 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 blah. I'm like, yeah. is it, does it sound good? Yeah, of course it, of course it does. And it, yeah. and it should, it's $8,000. Yeah. But do I need this? Yeah. When I when I could have this other little thing that sounds really really good and I can take it anywhere and get half your living room back. Get, yeah, I mean <laughs> I know it's. Yeah. I think it takes a mindset sw- switch. Yeah. A switch in your mindset. When I was growing up, I had a boombox, you know, <laughs> or my 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 portable like CD player and yeah. headphones, and that was it. Yeah. You know, my dad had his system. But I mean, I was lucky if I was allowed to touch it, right? Mm-hmm. But it's it, when you when you get your own stuff and you really start thinking about all the things that you need, mm-hmm. it can become it can become overwhelming. Yeah, and very I see quickly. it in the comments a lot. You know, one thing leads to another thing leads to the I need I still like I ha- now I now I need a million other things. Yep. So anyway, I just I think that. What's cool about something like this is that it really takes a lot of guesswork yeah. out of it, and it sounds good. Mm-hmm. There's something to be said for you know just having something that works yep. and is reliable. Yeah, it's 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 one of my favorite products so far this year. It really is. And talk, it's if we if we at the end of the year give out an award for uh, biggest 180, <laughs> or Andrew Andrew has to eat his hat. <laughs> Or a, or a shoe, it, it's going to be this. I already know because yeah. I went from I don't think you're no <clears throat> to yeah, yeah. <laughs> so yeah. it's it's been a lot of fun and yeah. Hopefully, people will you know give it a shot. So that's it. That is now our review of the Bang & Olufsen Bio Sound Level. What did you guys think? Let us know down in the comments below. And while you're down there, my question of the day for you is this. What matters most to you when it comes to a product like the Level? And how would you use the Level in your home? Let's get a conversation started, shall we? If you like this video, please do give it a thumbs up, like, and subscribe, and ring that bell so that you're notified when new videos come out. I know our release schedule has been a little bit different in June, which is why you need to turn on notifications so you don't miss anything. And you're really not gonna wanna miss anything because we are 9,000 subscribers away from 200,000. And when we hit 200,000, we're putting on a video that's all about you guys. And you're gonna be able to win some pretty, pretty primo stuff. Let me just say, uh, if you've seen it on this channel, 
chances are you may have an opportunity to win it and not something we have, not B-Stock, no, 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 fresh from the factory. So be sure to subscribe because you're gonna have to be a subscriber in order to be eligible. So again, 9,000 subscribers away from 200,000. So if you haven't subscribed, subscribe today. If you use any of the links that Christy left for you down below, know that that's a great way that you have continued to show your support for this channel and the work that we do here. And both of us thank you all very much for doing so. Follow me on Instagram at Recovering Audiophile. And that is it. So you all know the drill. Remember, the only person who has to like the sound of your system is you. So happy listening, everybody. Thank you so much for watching. And we'll see you on the next one. Bye.